Okay, so we're going to run through the absolute basics of what you need to know to be able to create websites using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's get started. I have here a completely empty folder, and within this I want to put some kind of HTML file. But to get started, I'll just create a folder which I'll randomly name as website. Okay, I'll open up this folder, and in here now we want to put our HTML files and our supporting CSS and JavaScript files. Now, uh, just open your favorite editor, in this case I'll use Sublime Text 2, and I'll drag in the whole folder into Sublime so that I can get this tree where I can browse the files that I want to work with. So I'll just full screen Sublime. So the first thing I'll do is that I have this empty file now, and what I will do is just I'll save this as index.html. And you'll notice that now I now have this index.html file within the website folder. So the thing with an HTML file is that it's just another text file. It's just another file with the extension .html. So if you have a file which has the extension doc or docx, that's a file that Word understands. So it's a convoluted text file that only Word can open. Now, an HTML file is a file that contains HTML that any text editor can open because it's just text. But if you give a browser an HTML file, then it will render it, render it as a web page. So let's get started in actually creating the file. The first thing we need to do is to supply a doc type. Now in explaining doc types, we could make this quite convoluted, but I'll just sort of glance over this and saying that this is due to the history of, for example, the browser wars, where HTML has been around for quite some time and browsers have uh, decided to implement different features of HTML, allow different types of things being done in HTML. Consequently, we've come to the point where we need to specify what kind of standard we're following when we're creating the HTML document. Again, glancing over this, if you just specify this, if you just say doc type HTML, uh, then, or actually exclamation point doc type HTML, then what we are going to do is create a document that corresponds to the standard of HTML5. So, before you find another reason to actually worry about this, just ignore it for now and use doc type HTML. So the first thing we'll do is that we'll just specify that this is an HTML document by creating the uh, element HTML. So in HTML, we work with what is called elements. So this is an element and this is a tag. So this is the opening tag HTML and this is the closing tag HTML. Together they form the element of HTML. This is the root node of the tree in an HTML document. Now, what do I mean when I say tree? Well, HTML documents are trees. So we could say something like the root node of the document is HTML. Under, under the root node of HTML, or like the root of the tree, we could put a branch which is called head. And again, under the root node of HTML, we could put another branch which would be body. So head and body are now referred to as children of the root node HTML. Within head, we could put something like title, which would then be a child of head, which is a child of HTML. So title now is not nested within body, but body is only nested uh, directly under HTML. So head and body are sort of on the same level of nesting. And these are siblings. And now under body, we could, for example, put h1, which is a header, and we could put a p tag, which is for a paragraph. So now p and h1 are siblings, and p is a child of body and h1 is the child of its parent body, and body is the child of HTML. So this is how we build HTML documents, but this was just pseudocode. What we actually write is something like this. So this is the same thing again. I have HTML, and within the element HTML, I put the head element. As a sibling to the head element, I put the body element. So now we have two nodes. We have the root node, and then we have the head node, and we have the body node. And within this, I can put different stuff. So let me just put title here, uh, my super fine website, and close up title. So you can see now that I'm doing this in two ways. Uh, on line three, I'm opening head and closing it on line five. However, on line four here, I'm opening title and writing the contents of the title on the same line and then closing on the same line. Now these are both valid. Stop and think about this for a minute and consider why this is not valid. Note how I'm using indentation to uh, show what is nested within what. Here we're opening head, here we're closing head, here we're opening title, and here we're closing title. This is very hard to indent because it's incorrectly formatted. Because we're opening something, we're opening a child, which is title, within head, 
but we're closing it outside of, of head, which doesn't make any sense. So I need to close title in here. Again, this could be written like so. Doesn't really matter. But for the sake of brevity, I'll just put it like this. So what we have now is the absolute minimum that you would need to create, a, create an HTML document. Under the standard of HTML5, if you try to do anything less than this, you won't uh, actually conform with the standard. So if we save this now, I'll go back to the folder and you can see that my index.html file has this little website symbol. So if I double click it, I'll open it in a browser and you can see here at the top that the title that I put in was my super fine website and it shows up here in the tab. However, apart from this title, you can see that we have nothing but an empty page. So let's now actually put something uh, into some content into this page. So we talked about the h1 element before or the h1 tag. So let's put uh, something like this is my awesome title. Too much is awesome today. So uh, let's actually put this in as well. Uh, there is the p element or the, the paragraph tag. Uh, this is a paragraph containing. OK, so having a look at this. So what you can see now is that we get this title, which by default has a larger font than this paragraph. So we now have two tags. We have the, the H1 tag and we have the paragraph tag. Let's just quickly look at what happens if we input another paragraph. This is... So we have two P tags. We'll look at this again and you can see that the first paragraph is on one line and the second paragraph is on another line. So you can think of this as something uh, like a paragraph in uh, your regular text editor, whether you're using Word or OpenOffice or Pages. So whenever you hit enter, this is like creating another paragraph tag. A lot of people are taught to do something like this. This is another paragraph of text and this is another line of text. Let's have a look at this. Here we are in the same paragraph, but we are breaking the text of this paragraph. So we are breaking onto another line because we have a paragraph tag and the paragraph uh, and the ending paragraph tag here. So the paragraph sort of encapsulates these two lines where in, in these two lines, we have this BR tag, right? Uh, which stands for break. So paragraph and break. So uh, what this break tag would correspond to in a text editor is something like pressing shift enter in uh, a lot of the text editors, which means that you're sort of creating a fake paragraph. You're breaking onto a new line, but you're still in the same paragraph. So generally, if you're just working with text, ignore this idea of BRs, unless that's actually what you want to do, and then just end the paragraph and, and create a new one. So now we have three lines of text. The use of the BR tag opens up an interesting question where the BR tag was just one tag, was just like an opening tag without a closing tag. That gives us the understanding that there are elements that are built up of opening tags and closing tags. And then there are self-closing tags such as BR or HR, which stands for horizontal rulers. So saving this and having a look. Horizontal ruler just pulls a line uh, from the left to the right, just across the page, right? And if you think about this, a horizontal ruler, it doesn't really make any sense to have an opening and a closing for a horizontal ruler because a line is always a line. You cannot really put anything into a line. Another tag which behaves this way is uh, the image tag. So I'll just grab a, uh, an image from the awesome service which is called Place Kitten. So if I do this, I, I, I input the tag IMG and then give it the source of this URL then we get this awesome cat image, right? And if you think about this again, it doesn't really make any sense to do something like this, to close the image, because what would I put here? Woo -woo -woo -woo, right? The image is the image. What, what would I put here? So putting something inside an image is not a concern of HTML. It's a concern of like an image editing program. So image is also one of these tags that are self-closing. This, however, also brings up an interesting question. What's up with this SRC equals ba 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 ba? This is the idea of attributes. All of this is an attribute for the IMG tag. So what we're saying is that if we, if we delete this for a moment and think about it, we have an IMG tag, right? We say there is an image at this location in the page. But if we just say this, it doesn't really make any sense. The browser goes, okay, there's an image, but where's the image? How can I find the image? So we need to specify the SRC, the source of the actual file. So we're saying 
I have the IMG tag, there I have an image, and this is where you can find the image. So this is the, known as the property, uh, and this is known as the value. So we specify, this is a general form, we specify some kind of property for the tag and say that this property equals some kind of value. And generally we put this in quotation marks so that uh, the HTML parser is not confused about what part belongs to the value. Okay, but what if I wanted to put like a border around this image? Now, in the old days, what people would do is that they would add another attribute, another property to the IMG tag and say something like border equals five. We can try this out and we can see that we actually get a border. However, we've sort of come to the point now where we realize that adding a border is actually a visual concern. And this brings us into the point where we need to discuss what is the concern of HTML and what is the concern of CSS. So, the things we're talking about today is HTML, and we're talking about CSS, and we're talking about uh, JavaScript. So, HTML is the markup language, right? HTML defines the tree of the document. What are the contents of this document? HTML can be seen as sort of the entry point of this website. CSS is the style of the website, meaning what does it look like? What colors are there? Where are things positioned? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And JavaScript can be seen as the interactivity to some extent. I mean, you can achieve some interactivity just using HTML, but the things that people do with JavaScript today are just absolutely crazy. So you can see JavaScript as the as any more kind of complex interactivity that you do with the website without having to reload the page. So how are these then connected? Well. Again, uh, the HTML can be seen as sort of the entry point of the website. So what happens is that you load, the browser loads the HTML file and the HTML file will point to a CSS file and point to a JavaScript file and then pull the contents of these files in and load them into the browser so that we can execute whatever styles are in, whatever styles are in the CSS file and whatever code is in the JavaScript file. So let's look at how we do this more concretely. Uh, I'll just go into head and add the link tag and I'll just say link rel style sheet href for like hyper reference and then I'll just assume I have a folder which is called style sheets and then I'll just say slash main dot css so I'm assuming I have this file which if you look at the source tree here I obviously don't so saving this file uh, Going into the, the browser and reloading, I've removed the border before, but now nothing happens because we don't actually have that CSS file. What we could do to make this a bit interesting, now I'm in Chrome here, uh, but generally now all of the browsers have some, some kind of developer tools. Probably this originated from Firebug, but I may be wrong on that. So I'll just right click and say inspect element to bring up the, the developer tools. And then if I go to network, to the network tab here, uh, and then reload the page, what you can see is that the network tab now captures all of the requests that this page does. So what happens first is that we get the index.html file, and then we hit the point where we wanted to get the main.css file. But you can see this is red, and you can see that the status of this is failed, because obviously we didn't find the file because the file didn't exist. And then just uh, out of curiosity, we can see that uh, we also get